Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Adam Roof, and thank you for joining me tonight for this presentation by the Burlington Democratic Party. Uh, tonight, we'll be joined by Owen Milne, who is seeking the Ward 3 City Council seat in the August 17th special election. Before we jump into that conversation, um, I wanted to share a quick reminder from the party about our nominating process uh, coming up at the end of this week. Uh, we'll be holding our vote this Friday, which is June 18th at 12 p.m. via Zoom, and the link to that meeting will be shared widely on our social media pages, by email, and on our website, which is burlingtondemocrats.com. Um, with that, I'd love to get started. We've got Owen Milne with us tonight. For viewers, uh, please know that you can call in. The phone number will be on the screen throughout the show. It's also 802-862-3966, and we look forward to taking your calls um, throughout the show. Um, Owen, welcome. How are you doing this evening? Um, great. Thanks, Adam, for having me here. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're here. You and I have known each other for a few years, so I'm really excited uh, to give you this opportunity to talk more broadly with, with the Burlington community, uh, and those that are viewing here tonight. Uh, we'll also save this recording and share it throughout the rest of the week. Um, let's jump right in. Owen, could you share with us why are you hoping to run? Why are you running? Uh, thanks, you know, for the audience and, um, you know, I'm um, excited um, about the opportunity to serve Burlington. Uh, the reason I'm running is because I've really had the benefit of um, working closely with Brian Pine over the past few years. Um, I live and work in Ward 3. I'm the executive director at the Community Sailing Center. And over that period of time, uh, Brian has been really helpful to me on things related to um, uh, traffic in the city and parking, uh, things related to our lease at the sailing center. Um, but his service to the community was no more apparent than when he really helped out um, Ice Cream Bob. I don't know how many of uh, you have met Ice Cream Bob before, but he owns that little creamy stand right down on the waterfront, uh, right next to the Echo Center. He's been there for 18 years, and I'm part of uh, a group of uh, the waterfront um, you know, organization leaders and business owners. And, um, uh, and he had informed us at one of our meetings that um, he was gonna lose his, his business because of Amtrak coming into downtown. And um, uh, despite his efforts to, you know, try and engage with uh, City Hall in kind of a collaborative and constructive manner, um, he um, got some notification um, uh, um, about 60 days before his building was to be demolished by the railroad. And he said to us, he said, hey guys, this is it. My business is closed. Uh, this will be my last meeting. And I, I said to Bob in the meeting, I said, don't, don't hang up. Don't quit just yet. Let, let's give Brian a call. Um, I, you know, Brian has worked really hard for me before. Let's see, you know, what he can do. And, you know, Ice Cream Bob was like, okay, I'll give it one more shot. And he, I called Brian, I told him about what was going on. And Brian said, this is unconscionable. We cannot let, you know, this be the precedent for how you engage with um, the city of Burlington. Um, he's been collaborative and constructive and nice. Um, and Brian said to me, oh, and let me see what I can do. I don't know what magic he worked. I don't, I'm guessing he probably called, you know, other members of city council. I'm sure there was probably a few phone calls to Parks and Rec, uh, you know, Public Works, I'm sure had to get involved. Um, but Brian worked, you know, the type of magic that a city councilor does. And I get a phone call from Ice Cream Bob about a week or two later, and um, and he calls me and he said, Owen, you'll never believe it. Brian found me a new spot 
I can live out the last couple of years of my business on the waterfront. And he said, the new spot is actually even better than where I was before. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't have to close down my business and I get to, to live it out. And he said, and honestly, one of the things that worried me the most was telling the high school kids that I employ that they wouldn't be able to have a job this summer. And so he said, and so Owen, you've got ice cream for life. Uh, or he said, as long as I'm alive, maybe that's a better way to put it. And I said, uh, ice cream, Bob, you know, you can give my share to Brian. Um, Brian did all the work. I made one phone call. Um, and, but I tell that story because in my opinion, that's the job of city council. It, mm -hmm. you answer the call, you listen in intently, you ask the right questions, you understand the root of the problem, and then you roll up your sleeves and you act. And I know sometimes people consider that to be the part of the job is that's, you know, less interesting or, or uh, less glamorous. But in sure. my opinion, that's the part of the job that I love the most. Sure. And, and that's the kind of uh, servant leadership I would be bringing to Burlington. Oh, it's a great story. And you know, I also had the chance to work with Brian for a number of years. Um, great counselor, and he's going to be great at CEDO as well. Um, you know, looking forward towards the, the special election, which will be on August 17th, um, we still have to get through the nominating processes. The, the Democrats will be um, having our process on Friday, as I mentioned. Um, other nomination processes will be wrapped up by the end of this week. Oh, and you don't know who else will be in the race, but you have an idea of at least a few who are interested. Could you talk a little bit um, at this point, what do you see so far um, are, are, as the things that differentiate you from the other folks who have either committed um, or are thinking about seeking election um, in August? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I, um, it, I've spent the better part of my career focused on um, community leadership. So, um, you know, I I would say my politi my my time spent in politics is actually very little, other than um, when I kind of engage. Um, um, other community leaders and things that um, intersect with the government. Um, but, you know, th what that, how that has translated is, has been into both um, uh, community service um, at the local level, as well as some um, uh, commissioner level uh, service at the, at the statewide level. Um, so, you know, I've served on the boards of, um, Sir, or the a commissioner uh, for Sir Vermont that oversees AmeriCorps in the state of Vermont. Um, many of those AmeriCorps programs are um, are here in Burlington. Um, served on the governor's committee for employment for with people with disabilities, um, and that's those are both governor appointed um, positions at the at the statewide level. Um, uh, have uh, served on the uh, the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce. Uh, leadership Champlain Generator Burlington, which is the, the makerspace in Burlington. Mm -hmm. um, recently was, um, elected the board of directors for Vermont State Employees Credit Union. Um, I think one of the things that I'm most proud of um, in that community leadership has been at Spectrum Youth and Family Services, uh, where uh, I worked to create Detail Works, which was a, um, uh, a job skills program that work for youth in transition to give them uh, job skills in a, in a, in a safe um, environment. Um, that was one of the greatest challenges that a lot of the um, underprivileged youth in our community end up running into. Um, so um, as I've kind of interacted um, and learned more about the other people that have shown interest, I think the one that's the one thing that I have seen come out um, most often that I, I feel kind of proud talking about is that that area of community leadership. Um, that would be, I would say, one of the, the biggest distinctions between me and others. Sure. Thank you for that answer. Um, to get a little bit more specific here, um, I'm interested for, you know, to hear more about 
your passions. Um, we know why you want to run for office. We understand a little bit now more about what differentiates you and the others who are thinking about running. Uh, what are you most focused? Um, what are you most passionate about, and how will those passions help you focus on certain policies um, if and uh, if you're able to to secure the seat and, and serve Ward Three as a city councilor? Yeah. So um, you know, I tell that story of um, servant leadership um, and Brian um, because it that really serves as a um, and underpinning of, of how I would approach um, the, the work of city council on issues. Um, so, so often, um, you know, people will um, have things that, that they happen to be passionate about personally and then just run with it straight to city hall. Um, what the way that I think servant leadership is different is that, um, I'm going to be actively engaged with the, the people in Ward 3 to, um, to inquire on things like, instead of you know, posting on front porch form about you know, what I want to do and get on board, um, a lot of the, what you'll hear from me will be asking people, what are the things that keep you up at night and keep you from being able to put food on the table? And, uh, and then um, taking those stories to uh, City Hall and, and sharing with uh, um, other counselors about the other things that are, are trouble um, spots for the people that are my neighbors. Um, so, but I know that for the purposes of this, you know, um, it's important that I uh, um, also uh, work to identify what those issues are um, because sometimes the things that are really Interesting, like let's talk about the pit in the in the center of Burlington doesn't necessarily impact um, people's daily lives. So I've been making a lot of phone calls, and Adam, and you know, I you know probably in the hundreds of calls I made over the past couple of weeks, um, a couple of the things that I keep hearing coming up um, are uh, housing affordability is a huge issue in Burlington. I keep hearing it time and time again. When I ask that question of, you know, what keeps you from being able to put food on the table, that is absolutely one of them. It is, um, it is not okay that some people are paying, you know, 40 or 50% of their income on, you know, their rent. So I would say that that's certainly one. Um, the other one that I hear regularly is, issues related to substance abuse and mental health. Um, you have to understand Ward 3 is the downtown of Burlington and most of the old North End. That's really in the what keeps somebody up at night conversation because a lot of the issues that, that we see out on our streets are directly related to substance abuse and mental health. Um, we as a city have um, you know, spent a lot of time and energy on on, on certain projects in Burlington. And I think it's time to start shifting some of that attention towards what we can be doing for solving for that issue. Um, and then, you know, uh, the other one that I see and hear um, about as well is accessibility in Burlington. I happen to uh, see and hear about that one as well. Um, interestingly, <laughs> that, that issue usually comes up when I'm having a conversation with somebody face to face, they bring that up, whether that's an issue for them, I'm not sure, but, um, but those are three things that I hear about actually with, with some regularity. Uh, so um, that's what I'm hearing about so far. I would imagine that, um, that those things will change um, over time as I, as I start engaging deeper um, with people on Ward 3. Thanks, Owen. Um, those are good examples. You brought up housing, uh, substance abuse, and mental health, as well as accessibility. Um, I'd like just to follow up a little bit to talk a little bit more in specifics about um, about housing in Burlington. You know, from the calls that you've yep. done from the long time of being a you know living in Burlington, working and living in Burlington, uh, what do you see as some of the biggest inhibitors for or biggest challenges that we as a community are facing um, to create new, not just affordable but quality housing as well? Yeah. So. Um, there is, there, 
I know that on both sides of this, both the progressive and democratic side, that there are uh, really good kernels of ideas that I think that need to be sussed out more. Um, and um, this is one of the reasons why I'm actually seeking both party nominations is because um, quite often one of the things that I see happen is that there is a, a good idea that's arising on one side um, of the aisle and, um, and some of the, the bias and the challenges, um, you know, kind of impede that from getting fully baked. And, um, and again, this is part of the legacy of Brian that I, I want to carry forward is that idea of taking some of the, the um, kernels of those ideas and then, you know, moving them through the process. One of those examples that I would say is, um, you know, things like short-term rentals. I, I, you know, short-term rentals have an impact to the overall volume of housing. Um, volume of, of housing impacts uh, the price. And, and I think that we need to be taking a very good, you know, close look at regulating that short-term housing. Um, but the, one of the things that trips us up, up, us up the most in moving through a regulation of, of, of short-term rentals is some of those definitions and those issues around um, who, you know, who's gonna help move, move something forward. And this is where I feel like um, you know, my approach in, um, in uh, seeking both nominations will send a strong signal to the rest of my counselors um, that there is someone here who's gonna work to get, the, get things through and completed and done. Gotcha. Um, you know, one thing, you, one, one thing yeah. that has been, you know, on the front of everyone's mind, um, well, a lot has been on the front of our minds these days has been, you know, not just the pandemic, and we had a, a big announcement this week that the restrictions from the governor's office will be lifted. There's been a lot of focus on what the economic recovery will look like. Um, you know, with your work at the Sailing Center, you see a whole breadth of different types of people, uh, not just in the downtown and waterfront, but throughout the city. Uh, what, in your perspective, should, would the priorities be of the city and if you are on the city council uh, for our journey towards an economic recovery as we come out of this pandemic? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, so, you know, as we look at, you know, economic development in Burlington, um, I would say that, uh, um, you know, one of the barriers that, that we run into, while um, this may not necessarily um, seem like an economic development issue, um, uh, I will tell you that a lot of the things that I hear from people within the, the business community is that um, you know, the, uh, the intersection between social issues and economic recovery are really tight, meaning that people, um, if we don't address some of the substance abuse and mental health issues, that it actually impedes the, the willingness to, um, to, for businesses to wanna to be able to move into and expand in Burlington. Um, I actually consider and see investment in mental health and substance abuse as an economic recovery um, uh, investment that um, um, finding a way for us to solve for those. And that's investment both in the private sector, but then also exploration in looking at public private partnerships within the existing social services sector to actually identify ways to do that. I used to serve on the board at Spectrum. And I can tell you that um, they're right now trying to find um, uh, real estate uh, in order to um, you know, open and expand counseling for teens and young adults is one of the things that's a big impediment right now to expansion of those services in Burlington. Can you imagine what it'd be like if we were taking some of this Economic Recovery Act in the city of Burlington and being able to invest and support things on that ground level to help solve for some of those issues? Um, I served on the board of the United Way uh, and oversaw on the Community Investment Committee some of the, um, uh, the ways that the United Way was investing and also some of the, the needs that we were seeing on the ground in Burlington. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you um, from firsthand that, uh, that a little bit of money and investment in those social services in Burlington will go a long way to addressing some of those issues. And I see um, 
that as being one of the easiest ways for us to recover from some of those problems. Thanks, Owen, on that answer of economic recovery. Um, I tend to agree that there is an intersection between economic and community development. In fact, we have in Burlington uh, a, a whole department dedicated just to, to working on that intersection. Um, you know, another, yeah. another piece that's really important that I wanted to make sure that we elevated and center tonight uh, is our conversation about public safety and, and more specifically policing. Um, can you talk a little bit about, I know you've thought about this quite a bit over the years. Um, can you talk a little bit about your philosophy yeah. on how to be looking forward on public safety and, and policing? Yeah, so um, I would say that I am very eager, like I'm sure we all are, to see the results of the um, uh, the work that the consultant comes to brings back um, that sheds some light on uh, how we use those public safety services um, in the city of Burlington. Um, you know, uh, I have been getting asked um, the question, do you, do, do you believe in cutting, uh, defunding the police? Or um, sometimes they'll, you know, the question will be, would you cut the, the budget by 50%? And um, the answer that I often find myself giving is, I don't know yet. Um, and and the, the, the reason I say that is because having come from a consulting background, um, I did work in uh, a workplace consulting um, entity that actually um, helped drive transformational organizational change for, for businesses and large, um, large organizations. I can tell you that um, having the information um, available on on how resources are used is is the tool that everybody uses in order to cut through the emotional um, uh, dissonance um, that gets in the way of getting towards where you ultimately want to go. Do we need people um, armed officers making uh, traffic stops? Uh, do we need armed officers? Um, attending, you know, to fender benders in Burlington. Uh, um, do, um, uh, do, you know, th uh, what I would say is that oftentimes what we're doing is we're using uh, one um, individual and and having them try and do a cadre of different different activities. Uh, what I think the information from the report will help us uh, glean is to identify what does our future um, public safety department look like and actually um, have us better align the resources that we have to the needs that we have in the community. You wouldn't send a SWAT team in every single time somebody has a car accident. Um, it doesn't make sense to have um, resources um, misused in that way. I, I would be um, the counselor who would be taking a deep dive into that information because I'm comfortable in that space of really looking at what the numbers are, looking at how the resources are used, and then making sure that they're matched. I do it every day at the sailing center in leadership in that position. I'd be doing it the same thing in Burlington as well. Gotcha. Uh, thank you, Owen. Um, I'm glad that we got to talk about some specific issues in, including not just housing, but public safety, economic recovery, and the intersections that happen with that. And, uh, social service side of things as well, including substance abuse. Uh, with about five or so minutes left, I wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to share anything else that you wanted to talk about uh, and maybe talk a little bit more because I know that I find your work at the Sealing Center fascinating. Um, I know a lot of folks sometimes don't know all the work that goes on at the Sailing Center. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes yeah. and I'll tee you up nicely with uh, maybe an opportunity to talk about all the awesome programming that's been going on at the Sailing Center under your leadership. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you have to be careful never to let an executive director of a nonprofit talk about their own organization because that will just take up every minute of time that, you know, that you could possibly have. Well, that, that's I think one of the things that I'm really- minutes left, so you can take <laughs> up off your time. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'll talk about the thing that I'm most proud of doing this year. So um, our board identified um, that we have to address diversity, inclusion, and belonging at the Sailing Center. We've addressed issues around accessibility, 
and, and differently abled individuals getting out of the water. Um, we've addressed issues of um, financial um, ability to pay and, and afford and, and participate. And we've you know, reduced gender um, uh, challenges to, to participation in the sport, but we've never really tackled things related to um, BIPOC families in our community. So we, uh, I, we partnered with the Trusted Community Voices, a group within CEDO to actually design what a scholarship would look like to provide support um, to break down those barriers of access um, to uh, BIPOC families in the community. Um, and the lesson that I learned is that if, Adam, if, if I tried to do it with um, our team at the Sailing Center without engaging the Trusted Community Voices, we would have failed miserably because we just don't have a, a truly deep understanding of what that's like. Um, so, um, and I would say that, you know, as it relates to the way I would approach things in Burlington moving forward is that we shouldn't be having conversations about um, uh, race and BIPOC um, programs and services without actually having people like that at the table, but that's an aside. Um, so uh, we worked with them. They, they helped us understand how to break the, down the issues around transportation, um, encouraged us on our marketing materials to make sure we were um, including a variety of different languages. Um, we were um, we made it a long term four plus year program rather than just being a one year scholarship, so that families know that if my kids loves this, how am I going to pay for it four years from now? Where this is a long term approach, it's the first of its kind in the the sailing industry, mm -hmm. um, and as a result, normally we might have five or six kids a year uh, um, come from BIPOC families in in Burlington. Uh, this year, it looks like we might be getting up to 17 or 18 in one year. So that's going from six to 18 in one year. And then the program is designed so that we'll actually pick up another 18 next year. So in two years, we'll be going from six to 36. And it's a three-year program, so we might pick another 18 the next year. If we're able to keep the retention, which we are, we're hoping that we can, um, we would be looking at um, having one of the most diverse sailing programs in the country, even though the population of Burlington is being, you know, roughly 15% BIPOC. Um, so, you know, that, that is one of the, this, this year. Um, right. And uh, yeah, and I guess that gives some insight onto how I might approach things in um, city council. Sure. Uh, well, thank you for that answer. We are approaching the end of our time. Um, Owen, I know you were chatting right before we came on here that you are active and in the process of setting up your Facebook page and website and all of those ways for people to get in touch with you. Um, and so folks can search on Facebook, um, maybe not tonight, but what, tomorrow maybe? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Owen Mill, and you can get in touch with him uh, and find his website and more information. Um, again, a reminder, we will be having the Democratic Party's nomination process happening at noon this Friday, the 18th. Uh, I encourage y'all to, to sign in. We'll also be hearing a little bit more from Owen at that time. Um, Owen, thank you so much for joining, and I look forward to talking some more, uh, and good luck with the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Look forward to more. Have a good night. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. All right, see ya.